coming in to land at Richmond near Sydney as calmly as on a routine flight, Squadron Leader Beavis completed the 11,500-mile non-stop flight from Scampton, Lincolnshire. The RAF Vulcan had flown halfway round the world in 20 hours, 3 minutes, refueling three times in the air. The chief of RAF Bomber Command, Air Marshal Sir Kenneth Cross, greeted Beavis and his crew, congratulating them warmly on the amazing record. They'd flown at an average of 575 miles an hour. In 1919, Ross Smith and Keith Smith took 27 days and 20 hours flying from Heston, London to Australia. These two Australian brothers flew a Vickers Vimy. In those days, a remarkably fine plane, though few people would fancy a long flight in one like it today. The aviation pioneers stake their life in enterprises such as this one. In Australia, one-time Premier Billy Hughes presented them with a well-deserved check. Shall we live to see the Vulcan outdated and 20 hours from England to Sydney reckoned slow time? The four-jet Avro Vulcan, largest Delta aircraft in the world, only went into squadron service a few months ago. This supersonic atom bomber has been making a round trip of 26,000 miles to Australia and New Zealand and back, with Bomber Command Chief Sir Harry Broadhurst as co-pilot. But at the very end of the flight, without a moment's warning, disaster strikes. The huge bomber lies a flaming wreck on the runway of London Airport. Four men are dead. Miraculously, Air Marshal Broadhurst and the captain, squadron leader Donald Howard, were thrown clear by their ejector seats in the last few desperate seconds. There are no other survivors. No one yet knows the cause of the disaster. The Vulcan was being talked down in very bad weather, and eyewitnesses say she appeared to hit an obstruction. The pilot, after being ejected, landed safely on grass. But Air Marshal Broadhurst hit the concrete and is hurried to Uxbridge RAF station with suspected fractures. Squadron leader Howard is able to leave with his wife after a checkup. He has escaped with a bruised forehead. But the Air Marshal is suffering from shock in addition to his injuries, and journalists are not allowed to see him. Bomber Command and civil air experts are quickly on the scene, and the Air Ministry promises an immediate inquiry into the accident which brought a brilliant round-the-world performance to such a tragic end.